The combat in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 can be pretty fast paced, a little bit overwhelming if you're a newer player, but it is actually very, very fun, especially when you get the hang of things and you start learning the system a lot more. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go over the extreme basics here, like how to counter visions or how to revive allies, things like that. Instead, I'll be going over some more in-depth mechanics and tactics that are actually pretty simple to understand. Let's first go over aggro because I feel like that's one of the biggest hurdles for newer players to adjust to. Aggro builds by causing damage and using various arts. And the more damage that a character does, the more aggro that they're going to generate. And conversely, on the opposite side of that, aggro is decreased as you take damage or use arts that can decrease it. Like Shulk's Shadow Eye, for instance. So it should go without saying that you want your tanks to draw the aggro and not someone like Shulk, who's more of a glass cannon. He's really, really fragile. He can deal out a massive amount of damage, but the more damage that you do, the more aggro that he's going to accumulate. For the majority of the game, you're going to have two different tanks. Ryan, who's going to tank a ton of damage, and Dunban, who is going to dodge. He's going to be an agility tank. Dunban is also going to pour on the damage, but unlike Ryan, his job is to boost his agility so that he can dodge, rather than taking the damage like Ryan. One of the most common new player mistakes is spamming arts with a non-tank character like Shulk, generating tons of damage really quick, and then the tank can't recover the aggro quick enough from their own arts and damage dealt. So remember, use arts strategically. Don't just spam them one after the other. That's going to generate tons of aggro. If you're a tank, then it's no problem. That's what you're made to do. But someone like Shulk or Melia, you gotta watch out for this. Look at how I operate Shulk here. Now granted, I am five levels higher than the partner Wolf, but the point of the matter is, I use Stream Edge and Air Slash right in a row. Then I calm down. I use a preemptive Shadow Eye just to make sure the aggro gets off of me, and I just use some auto attacks to finish it all up. The aggro is kept on my tanks, and everything finishes up nicely. We can't lose. Don't let a single one escape. Make it a swift victory. One of your main go-to strategies will be the break topple days sequence. On its own, break doesn't do anything, but it will allow you to topple the enemy. Once the enemy is toppled, all of your attacks will have 100% accuracy, your critical hits will start doing more damage, but more importantly, the enemy will be rendered pretty much useless. Once the enemy is toppled, by using a yellow art, you'll be able to daze the enemy. The damage that you do to a dazed enemy does not generate aggro. And on top of that, if your enemy had a vision, say that it was going to actually do a devastating attack and you had a vision, the daze will break the vision. You won't need to cast Monado Shield or Speed. The best part of all of this is that when you use consistent daze and topple attacks, that will extend the amount of time that the enemy is toppled and dazed. And this sets up for a strategy called topple locking, where you use daze and topple arts over and over to cause the enemy to be down for the majority if not the entire battle. 
The strategy is fairly simple. You just want to have a party that's relatively synergistic to be able to break, topple, and daze. Then, once your party gauge is full, you're going to execute a chain attack. And this is where you continually use the topple and or daze arts over and over and over again. The idea is that you'll be hitting the enemy while they're down so often with various arts and doing massive damage that you'll max out the party gauge again just to do the same break topple daze combo all over again. It is extremely powerful and the faster you can learn how to do this, the better. Even outside of topple locking, chain attacks are extremely powerful. Some things to note that defeating an enemy with a chain attack will reward you with 25% more experience and AP, and will also give you double the SP that you would normally gain. You'll also end the battle with one bar filled in the party gauge. The biggest advantage of chain attacks is the ability to topple lock like I was explaining earlier. However, there's also a damage multiplier that you'll receive by comboing arts in a row that are of the same kind. For the example I show here, I use four red arts, which are physical attack arts. By using the same type of art consecutively during a chain attack, you'll gain a multiplier bonus for the damage that's caused. And understand that you're not locked into just using three of one specific color art. So in this case, yes, I'm using four red arts. However, there's more versatility to that. Talent arts are considered neutral and therefore they link with any type of art that you want to combo. So if you began your chain attack with a yellow art and the next person used a white talent art and then the next person used a green art, well that would all link and it would go ahead and multiply the damage by three. The maximum multiplier that you can have is times seven and you'll need to do five links all in one chain attack. Now you begin to see how powerful chain attacks actually are. You can topple lock with them. You can perform a chain linked combo with this massive multiplier to do crazy damage. They're definitely worth figuring out. The final thing to know is that you can lengthen your chain attacks and that is a little bit more convoluted. It has to do with affinity, specific skill links, the timing of your B button press, a whole lot of things really. The point of the matter is that you'll want to get good at understanding how chain attacks work. So experiment with it. Try out some combos here and there. Try to figure out how your team synergizes well enough to be able to create a really long combo that can actually benefit from the damage multiplier at the end of it. I've always felt that Xenoblade has had a pretty fast-paced battle system, but albeit very rewarding as well. You feel a sense of accomplishment after you've taken out some enemy with a huge topple lock combo, or maybe even just this long crazy chain combo that has this massive multiplier on it too. Hopefully the video was a little bit insightful for you and maybe you learned something if you're new to Xenoblade Chronicles. This information isn't too groundbreaking by any means, it's mainly for newer players. So 
Let me know if the video did help you out. It's always encouraging to see your guys' comments. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care.